Hello everyone, I am Harsh and today we are going to discuss the 23rd problem uh, by CP30 in CP31 sheet by TLE eliminators under the 1100 rating range. So let's move on to this CP31 sheet. So here is the 1100 rating box clicked and here is the clickable link to our problem. So let's move on to the problem. So the name of the problem is difference of GCDs. So you are given three integers in LNR. You need to construct an array A1 to AN such that every element of the array is greater than equals to L and less than equals to R and GCD of I comma AI are all distinct. So you need to construct an array like this or if there is no such array, you have to report that there is no solution. So here GCD of x comma y denotes the greatest common divisors of integers x comma y. And it's given that the number of test cases are of the order of 1 4. The first line contains three integers n and, L, n, L and r. So n is of the order of 10 power 5 and l and r is of the order of 1 e 9. And it is guaranteed that sum of n over all the test cases does not exceed 10 power 5. So if it's possible, then you need to print yes and then print the n integers of the array. And if it is not possible, you need to print no. So let's understand the question via help of this particular example. Okay. So what you're given is you're given n numbers. So you are given a value n actually, not the n numbers. So you are given a value n and you are given L and R. What you need to do is you need to construct n numbers a1, a2, an, you need to construct an array such that every number in the array, that is every ai, is greater than equals to l and less than equals to r. Okay. And gcd of i, comma ai should be equals to, should be equals to some value. But all these gcds, i, comma ai are testing. Okay, so basically you constructed an array. So what will happen is the first, for the first GCD, what you will get, you, let's suppose you constructed an array A1, A2, A3 up till AN. So the first value is what you will get is GCD of 1 comma A1. The second value is GCD of 2 comma A2. The third value is GCD of 3 comma A3. Dot dot up till the last value is GCD of N comma AN. So the question wants you to construct an array in such a way that these values are all distinct. So the question is that if it is possible to construct such an array, can print yes and then print n numbers and if it's not possible, simply print no. So I hope the question is clear. So let's, before proceeding with the solution, Let's take one test case to understand what actually we can do. So let's suppose the number of numbers is 5, the value of L is 1 and the value of R is 5. That is every number in the array should be in the range of 1 to 5 and the number of numbers is 5. So let's suppose I construct an array in such a way that uh, the first, let me take the given example only, given answer only. So let us take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if we construct an array such a way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see whether this array is satisfying the condition or not. Are every element greater than equals to 1 and less than equals to 5? Yes, every element is within 1 and 5. And let's take the GCD of 1 comma 1. Basically, we will take GCD of i comma ai. So i is basically one based indexing. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So GCD of 1 comma 1. GCD of 2 comma 2, GCD of 3 comma 3, GCD of 4 comma 4 and GCD of 5 comma 5. What's the answer? Over here we get 1, over here we get 2, over here we get 3, over here we get 4, over here we get 5. So yes, every GCD of i comma ai are distinct and hence this is a valid solution. So I hope the question is clear. 
So before proceeding with the solution, let's discuss the expected time complexity for this. So as you see, the number of numbers n is of the order of 1 5, right? So any solution, any solution that works in big O of log n or big O of n or basically big O of n log n or even as high as big O of n square root n will definitely work. But if you have a solution that is working in big O of n square or anything above this, this will definitely produce TLE for you. So you have to design a solution that works within these time constraints, right? So let's see what we can do. Okay. So you are given, you have to construct n numbers, right? A1, A2, A3, up till an. And you have to take the GCDs of these numbers with 1, 2, 3, up till n respectively, right? For A1, you will take its GCD with 1. For A2, you will take its GCD with 2. For A3, you will take its GCD with 3. Dot dot up till for An, you will take its GCD with N. And you want all these GCDs to be distinct, right? Okay. Tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. If I construct GCD of two numbers A comma B, is it, will it be safe to say that this GCD will be lesser than equal to minimum of a comma b. The greatest common divisor of a comma b will be definitely lesser than equal to minimum of a comma b, right? As we say that GCD of 3 comma 6 is 3. Uh, we can say that GCD of 4 comma 6 is 2. So every time the GCD of two numbers will be lesser than equal to the minimum of the numbers, right? So this is a very, very useful phenomenon. So using this, can we say that if we have numbers A1, A2, A3 up till An, let's suppose we constructed a successful array and since we are taking the GCDs with 1, 2, 3 up till N, so can we say that for the first array, for the first, for the number, for the first number, the GCD will be lesser than equal to 1. Similarly for the second number, the GCD will be lesser than equal to 2. I don't know that whether e2 is smaller or 2 is smaller. I don't know that. But the thing is that it will definitely be lesser than 2. Like we can say that GCD of two numbers will be definitely lesser than or equal to both of the numbers, right? So we can say the GCD over here will be lesser than equal to 2. Similarly, the GCD over here will be lesser than equal to 3. Dot dot up till the GCD over here will be lesser than equal to n. Now, since we want to want all these numbers to be distinct, so can I say that okay, GCD over here is less than equal to 1. So the only possible GCD is 1, right? Because the GCD is of two numbers is always greater than or equal to 1 if both if all the number if both the numbers are greater than or equal to 1, right? So the only possible GCD was 1, so we got 1 as answer. Over here, we know that GCD will be lesser than or equal to 2. But it can't be 1 because we want all GCDs to be distinct, right? So over here the GCD will be exactly 2. Similarly, over here, we want the GCD to be lesser than or equal to 3. But we know that it can't be 1, it can't be 2. So the only possible option is 3. And so we found a pattern that GCD of i, comma ai, GCD of i, comma ai is equal to exactly i. And this ai should be lesser than equal should be greater than equals to l and lesser than equals to r so what you need to do what you need to say what you need to uh, see the thing that you need to say is that if smallest multiple of i which is greater than equals to L is lesser than equal to R, then we can choose that AI. And if let's suppose there is no such AI, which is greater than equal to L 
and is a multiple of i and is lesser than equals to r then definitely we can say that gcd of i comma a i can't be i and hence the answer will be no so the thing that you need to do is you are given lnr you are given lnr you find the smallest multiple of i that is greater than equals to l so if that particular multiple is less than equal to r so we can definitely choose that as our ai and if the smallest multiple of i greater than equals to l is greater than r as well then we definitely can't take any ai such that gcd of i comma ai is equal to exactly i now the thing is how to get the smallest multiple of i smallest multiple of i greater than equals to l how to get this so this can be easily done by using the seal value of l by i multiplied by i so this will be the smallest multiple of i that is greater than equals to l and why does it work why does it work so if you let's suppose have the value of l as 5 and the value of i is let's suppose 3 so once you do calculate the seal value of 5 by 3 once you calculate the seal value of 5 by 3 it will come down to 2 and once you multiply this 2 with i that is 3 you will get 6 which is the smallest multiple of 3 greater than equal to l because whenever we take seal value we either get if the number is if the if l was exactly divisible by, by i we would have got l by i otherwise we would have got l by i plus 1 right so either it will be l by ith multiple of i or it will be l by i plus 1th multiple of i whichever of these will result the value greater than equal to l we will take that so we can easily get that using the seal value of l by i multiplied by i you can work on with some examples and you will definitely get this so now how to calculate the seal value of l by i now there is a very important formula that the seal value of a by b is nothing but a plus b minus 1 by b so over here the smallest multiple of i greater than equals to l will be l plus i minus 1 by i multiplied by So if this value is lesser than equals to r you can definitely choose this as ai and if this value is greater than r simply print no okay so let's jump on to the code so here is the code so first of all i took the number of test cases as input for every test case i called the solve function in the solve function i took n l and r as input constructed a vector ll answer which will definitely contains all the numbers at the end So what I did is I just simply iterated over all the i's from one to n. The smallest multiple of i less than greater than equals to l is basically l plus i minus one by i multiplied by i. So stored that in my temp variable. Simply pushed back that temp in my answer, and if this temp is greater than r, so I simply printed no and return. If till now I have not printed no, I am simply printing yes. and printing all the numbers present in my vector answer and simply a new line so this is how the code is pretty much simple there was a very beautiful idea over here that gcd of a comma b will be lesser than equals to a and b so that is a very important observation in this question and if you were able to click that then this question becomes very much solvable so now coming to the time complexity this loop runs for n Okay, this loop runs for n, and printing the numbers. This loop also runs for n. So over here, you can see that uh, you are at max. The dominating factor is n. So you can see the time complexity for every test case will come down to big O of n. And talking of the space complexity, you look. We have constructed a vector LL answer, which is basically going to store all the numbers at the end. so this takes a space of n in the worst case so the space complexity is also big of n and looking up to the constraints this will definitely work right so i hope all of you got it thank you